Okay, friends, we are back with day one of two dedicated large family style freezer cooking days. Now, yesterday I filmed two unboxing videos. I just got this beautiful 14 quart Go Wise electric pressure cooker. In addition to, I've been getting more and more use out of my eight quart instant pot. Now, I may have considered buying a second eight quart instant pot. It's just whenever I went over on Amazon, they didn't have any available. All they had were the six quarts, and I'm definitely not getting a six quart, uh, six quart anything in my life. So I have another friend. Her name is Ashley. She's over on largefamilymanagement.com. I met her in real life last spring. She's got nine kiddos, homeschool and mama nine. So when she went to buy her second electric pressure cooker, this is the exact model she bought. It does not have the steel inner liner. It has a ceramic coated inner pot. Anyway, you can look for my unboxing video just on that but she's had hers for over a year loves it uses it for lots of things so i thought if i'm getting a second one that's the one i'm gonna give it a go with i also did an unboxing video on this electric air fryer yesterday we used it this morning to do two dozen of those little sausage links that i got marked down at sharp shopper so uh it worked well we're gonna do more things with it travis was asking last night if he could do like steak or chicken breast or different like quick lunches for himself or whatever in it so we'll be getting more use out of that. What I was saying was last night in testing out the new 14 quart electric pressure cooker, I did 20 pounds of mashed potatoes for the freezer. I have another 10 pounds that I'll still need to make into mashed potatoes for our shepherd's pie for the slow cooker. And then what else did we get done? Oh, and then Naomi did 100 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the freezer. We haven't done those in months, but whenever we do them, they are super, super convenient. I've also shared in other videos, you can do those with meat and cheese. I want to show you my plan for the day. Now, a lot of times I'll use my whiteboard. I have these this free mega freezer meal planning pack that if you text the phrase freezer to 44222, I'll send it right back out to you. Or if the texting option Option doesn't work for you in your area because sometimes it gets a little glitchy you can click the link in the description below so this is my plan okay so everything that we're gonna make in the next two days we've got cornbread freezer cookie dough biscuits cinnamon French toast blueberry pancakes chocolate chip pancakes pizza crust mashed potatoes I already drew a line and gave myself that lovely check mark because that is complete we're gonna do meatballs for the freezer we're gonna do baked spaghetti shepherd's pie baked mac and cheese slow cooker sloppy joe's slow cooker honey and garlic chicken slow cooker rosemary chicken slow cooker white chicken chili i'm gonna do barbecue meatloaf i'd like to get four or so of those in the freezer i'm gonna do a big batch of spaghetti sauce because that will go with our baked spaghetti as well and I'm gonna do slow cooker garlic and lime chicken. Also, because I'm feeling hopeful because this is the beginning of my two days, I was also thinking this morning, oh, I've got a pork roast in the freezer. I could do a bunch of pans of pork fried rice, but I'm gonna hold on to that thought for now. I'm gonna try to continue to cross things off this list and get my check marks. I also made myself a little mental note. Some of these things I'm gonna bake and freeze, other things I'm gonna prep and freeze. So like with the cookie dough, we're prepping cookie dough and freezing it. I'm prepping biscuits and freezing it. We're gonna cook the French toast and freeze. We're gonna cook the pancakes and freeze. Prep the pizza crust. Some of these are full meals that'll be already baked, like the baked spaghetti. It'll be baked and we'll freeze, we'll bake and freeze. Many of these slow cooker meals though, we just prep them with the raw ingredients and freeze. So these will be easier to put together. So total, I'm thinking I should come out with at least 19 bulk items for my freezer. I also did just, this is for myself. My little green star is for Friday. Little pink star is for Saturday. And then I'm also going to bulk cook the ground beef. To get things rolling, Travis and all the kids put our new trampoline together yesterday while I played around with some of my new appliances and got organized. So right now, I'm gonna get Zion going on a big bulk French toast making station. I don't actually have a recipe up for how I do French toast for the freezer, so I'm gonna do that today. And then next step is I'm gonna get frozen ground beef going in both pressure cookers for several recipes that are coming up. So I have two and a half dozen eggs. I'm gonna add in two cups of milk. I'm gonna add in four tablespoons of vanilla. I have imitation vanilla, sorry, but that's from Aldi. And then we're gonna add in our ground cinnamon. 
and I have a fourth of a cup of cinnamon. And we're just going to mix it up here with the hand mixer. So there we go. So now Zion's going to hang out and have our French toast making station. we got two griddles going. The thing with cinnamon French toast is obviously a lot of the cinnamon stays on the top even after mixing. So every once in a while Zion will need to whisk it with a fork just to mix it up a little bit. And then what could happen, what happens sometimes with cinnamon French toast is towards the end of the batter, you'll need to add a few more shakes of cinnamon to the eggs that are left just to keep cinnamon on all your French toast pieces. So I have some things to frosting in the uh, microwave science working on French toast. I'm going to work on getting in 10 pounds of ground beef into the pressure cooker. So I'm doing, um, actually I guess it's technically nine. It's about four and a half pounds I'm gonna do in the instant pot. So I'm adding in my cup of water here. And then I'm gonna also, since I'm just learning to use uh, the GoWise 14 quart, I'm going to also do another four and a half pounds in there. And I am using, let's see, it is 93% lean ground beef. And I'm gonna add another, a cup of water. So in each of these electric pressure cookers, I've put a cup of water first. Now I'm going to put the ground beef in both and then I'll show you the settings. So I have five pounds of ground beef. Again, okay, I keep saying five pounds. It's four and a half, four and a half pounds, Jamero. Have my little trivet in there and our cup of water and the four and a half pounds of ground beef. And then over here, same thing in the go-wise. Under there's the little trivet. So put the lid on the IP here. Make sure it is set back to steaming. I'm gonna set that to manual, and I'm putting it all the way up here to 30 minutes. Ready, set, go, instant pot. And again, on my freezer cooking days, I've done ground beef, frozen ground beef, and frozen chicken uh, several different times in my instant pot. So this is gonna be my first go round, also doing it in the go wise. So in the go wise, I'm going to put this on 30 minutes also. There we go. It gives you a few seconds after you set it to adjust your time or change any settings. If you pause for like three seconds, it stops. So this is going. I also have external thermometers where we will double check, obviously, to make sure that the meat reaches its desired temperature internally. Okay, so I got bulk meat cooking. I'm also working on getting things ready to do meatballs and get big batch spaghetti going. So while there's nothing I can do in those areas for the moment, I'm gonna start getting some things baking for in the oven. I think I'm just gonna start with cornbread because that's super easy. I'm gonna do several pans of that and then freeze that for the upcoming weeks. It's something that I don't, I wouldn't take time to make on a daily basis or a, like, hey, let's have cornbread, but if it's in the freezer, we'll use it. And also something that I'm trying to do for you guys this time is I'm just noting my times on here. So at one, we got the French toast all mixed up and got that going. And I worked on getting the ground beef in the Instant Pot. And of course, you know, when I do this, I'm taking pictures and videoing too. So things probably take me a little longer, but now it's 1.30, so I'm gonna get going on my cornbread bulk cooking station. So now I'm gonna do a whole bunch of cornbread. This is, let's see, 80 ounces. And so I'm using eight cups of cornmeal, and then I'm gonna use eight cups of all-purpose flour. I've sent Mr. Travis to the store yet again for something else. I'm out of vegetable oil. I'm making this cornbread with olive oil because I can't wait for him to get back home with the other thing I sent him out for, because um, I, I need to get stuff baking. So we'll just experiment, see if this works with olive oil. It should though. But if you have vegetable oil at home, that's usually what I use. We're also gonna use eight cups of milk and I'll go through all the ingredients, but as always, you can go over to largefamilytable.com for the full recipe. You could also use whole wheat flour. I am using the flour that I have on hand. So here's all the dry ingredients in my pot. I'm going to mix these together and then add the wet. So here's what it looks like with all the wet ingredients added and now we're gonna use the mixer. And this of course is my super faithful 30 quart mixing bowl I got just for days like this. 
So I've been mixing away and it was a little dry. I went ahead and added two more cups of milk to get it to the consistency that my Jamarel Eyeball Cooking School says it needs to be for these big pans of cornbread. So that's gonna be a total of 10 cups of milk. But again, you can find the full recipe over on the blog. What's helpful with this Go Wise is it's done with cooking the ground beef, but I just realized it's actually showing me as the pressure is going down. Like right now it's on 5.8. When I first started trying to hit go on my camera, it was up at 6.7. So slowly, there we go, 5.5. I just think that's really helpful. And then over here on the Instant Pot, it's showing me that there's one minute. So once, oh, and we're done. So now with my trusty little lobster hands here, I'm going to vent this. Be super careful, I have to say all my disclaimers, uh, please read your instruction manuals for yourself with any pressure cooking or any cooking that you're doing. And uh, yeah, ready, set, go. So here is the venting feature now. <laughs> and I know that it is gonna steam on my cabinets. I don't have really good places to do this. So there you go, one day I'll get new cabinets. And then over here, once that's all the way down, I'll quick vent that. So here's how things are looking. If I had a large supply of nine by 13 pans, I could let you know obviously how many numbers of nine by 13 pans I have, but I have an eight by eight, a nine by 13. This is a nine by 11. And I think this is a nine by five. These are the pans I have to work with. And this is how much of the mix I have left. So I think I'm gonna be able to get at least eight for the freezer, which is great. And some of these, like the larger pans, I'll divide in two. And I might end up dividing that one in two when it comes to freezing time. Now this Instant Pot is done, and that one the pressure's still dropping. So I'll get these in the oven and then we'll check in. Okay, so Instant Pot confession showing you. Now last time I did this, it worked great. This time I had to, I was checking the temperature and some blood came out of the meat on the top and then I broke it open and it is not cooked all the way through yet. So I'm gonna put it in again and see what happens. Okay, so I just put it back on, put the sealant on. Okay, and there you go. All I can do is put it on for another go and see if two times does the trick this go round. The positive note to look at it is at least all the mess is contained in here and I'm not having to stand at the stove and fool with it. So let's check this puppy out. Okay, moment of truth. How do you like that? I can tell that one's not done either. So I'm gonna break it up some and put it back in for another 30 minutes and see how it all works out. Okay, so I'm gonna get this puppy all going again. At least the mess is contained for me. Also, I've got some little scrambled notes here to show you. I was writing crooked on my whiteboard, so please do not psychoanalyze my handwriting, but I just wanted to show you my little timetable. So it's a little after 2.30 now. We got four big pans of cornbread in the oven. I have put the pressure cooker meats back on for another 30 minutes, and now I'm gonna go have a break with Benjamin. When I get back, I'm gonna work on the meatballs for the freezer, and I'm gonna work on barbecue meatloaf for the freezer. And then for the rest of the afternoon, I still have cooking dough, biscuits, pizza dough, and I'm going to have Zion work on blueberry pancakes once he's done with French toast. And we will see. I mean, it's still early in the day, so I'm hopeful. But it was my goal to get those things done for the day. Oh, and to get the big batch of spaghetti sauce going. So we'll see what time this day really ends up. So that is it for the big batch of cornbread mix. I have several loaves up here cooling. This loaf got left in there about five minutes too long. But now I have three more pans in the oven. Mr. Benjamin, you had a good snuggle with mommy. He's up ready to play. Of course, I can't really wear him when I'm doing all this cooking, so he's gonna be in his seat for now. Um, the Instant Pot got done. The Go Wise got done. I actually took the lid off the Go Wise, and that meat is perfect. So now I'm gonna check the meat on the Instant Pot. 
And then, of course, I have more frozen ground beef to do. So I'm going to try it again. And um, I think what went wrong, I'm trying to think back, it's probably been at least two months since I've done beef in the electric pressure cookers. But I don't want my error to scare any of you guys. A lot of this is just you got to experiment and see how it's going to go with the meat that you have. Last time I did it, my meat may not have been frozen. Maybe that's the difference this time, but I have five to 10 more pounds I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna keep working with it and uh, see where I went wrong. I don't think it was a sealing issue because my Instant Pot was sealed fine. No steam was leaking or anything. I know I'm getting to know the go wise. I think it was just more of, I needed to put it on for longer than 30 minutes for that much frozen meat. But that's part of the fun of doing these videos is you can see my uh, haphazard attempts and how things really go down sometimes. So I just got done hand washing our uh, super mega bowl here. Some other little odds and ends. Next up, I'm gonna tackle the meatballs and the meatloaf. But um, got the last, gotta pull, actually gotta pull out three pounds of cornbread. Pressure cookers are doing their job. Other meat is out. Zion still stacking French toast. So I'm gonna get going on a big mega bowl of meatballs. Meatballs are super easy and fun because I can just throw it all into this bowl and mix it all up and we're gonna roll the meatballs. I'm gonna scoop them out in little balls and flash freeze them and then we'll drop them into gallon freezer bags. But there's a lot of things we can always use meatball for so that's why we're doing this super mega batch. So I put in my breadcrumbs. I'm also using old fashioned oats in it. We got our 10 pounds of ground beef under this mountain, seven eggs, getting ready to now put in our seasonings. I'm gonna do four tablespoons of minced garlic and then two tablespoons of each of the following, onion powder, garlic powder, oregano leaves, and parsley flakes. guys a check in I'm working on making meatballs you can see we're getting creative because uh, counters fill up quickly so I'm using stools to balance different pans I'm doing my meatballs so that I can flash freeze them you see my hands are a mess I'm not I know sometimes you'll see um, people suggest using an ice cream scoop and I've done that before too but sometimes I just don't want to get one more thing dirty my hands are already a mess from mixing the meatballs so I'm just using my hands to make our meatballs. And there's how the GoWise pressure cooker is going. And there's the Instant Pot working on that frozen ground beef. So I've got to take a trip out to the garage here, a field trip out there to flash freeze these meatballs. My mashed potatoes from yesterday, I did 20 pounds of potatoes that I also flash froze as mashed potatoes. So the final count here on the meatballs is it is 17 dozen meatballs. It is uh, 204 meatballs to be exact. Now some of my meatballs are on the larger size. So this could, you could probably um, get more meatballs out of this town, 10 pounds of ground beef if you wanted to. But I just think that's a good size meatball. I'm trying to give you guys a scribble board update here and I didn't uh, write down what's happening now, but it is 7.30 now. I'm getting ready to put homemade spaghetti sauce in the pressure cooker. I'm getting my other meat ready to do the four barbecue meatballs. And let's see, I gotta take another load of cornbread to the outside freezer. So I had a little bit of lost time, but Travis and the kids got home after I rested with Benjamin. So we all got caught up. And so anyway, somehow hour and a half here and I'm gonna keep on trucking them. So I just updated my list. So it's 7.30, so I'm hoping in the next hour to get uh, that sauce in the electric pressure cooker, get four barbecue meatloaves made, and make four baked spaghettis. So ready, set, go. Let's see how this works out. Now I'm gonna bulk chop a whole bag of green onions and five peppers and a pack of mushrooms for both the batch spaghetti sauce and for the barbecue meatloaf. So you'll see it's 7.58 now in confession. Travis and the kids had pizza while they were out, so that's what they brought us home. Anyway, I chopped up a bunch of these mushrooms, green onions, and green peppers. This is not all for the spaghetti sauce, 
but it's also for the barbecue meatloaves. I like to shove in whatever veggies we have available into pretty much whatever I'm making. So I'm gonna put probably about a fourth of these, maybe a cup of each, into the 14 quart that I'm doing with spaghetti sauce. I have now underneath this, there's already five pounds of ground beef in here, and then it's 210 ounces. I got two of these cans worth of sauce in there. So now I'm gonna put in the veggies, and I'm gonna put in the spices, and then we're gonna make some of this giant pressure cooker spaghetti sauce. And then again, working with what I have on hand, I'm gonna do two tablespoons of minced garlic, two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, two tablespoons of oregano leaves, and two tablespoons of parsley into our big pot. So now I'm gonna give everything a stir and get our lid back on. So I'm putting it on high pressure. I did the manual setting for 15 minutes. Okay, a little Jamerel scribble reality going on here. It's almost 8.15. I got the sauce in the big pressure cooker. Now, it took me longer because I totally forgot. I should have had one of my big, strong teenage sons prep all those veggies for me earlier today while Travis and the younger kids were out. Totally forgot about it. So I had to do a bunch of chopping because everybody's doing other stuff right now. Um, but anyway, the sauce is in the pressure cooker. Almost 8.15. I hear Benjamin crying, so I'm going to go get him up and change them and nurse them and uh just for a quick break hoping about 8 30 maybe 8 45 i'll be back in the kitchen to get those four barbecue meatloafs done and right now i'm filling my filling my big pot actually didn't need to be that full of water i'll dump some of this out i'm filling my big pot just to do some regular old noodles while the sauce is going in the pressure cooker i can get the water boiling and put the noodles in when I get back from getting Benjamin up and then he'll be out here back in his little seat. He's kind of going back and forth between me nursing him, resting in his bed, playing in his seat, playing on a blanket on the floor, someone else holding him. That's how he is spending his day. But he wishes he could be in the Ergo baby carrier. But again, I don't like to wear that when I'm doing all this cooking. Okay, I ended up laying down with Benjamin for like a half hour. So now I'm gonna go get caught up with what I left off in the kitchen. So I'm working on the barbecue meatloaf now and I just put in this whole container of old fashioned oats. I need 10 cups of oatmeal because I'm using 10 pounds of ground beef. You eating your yogurt, Miss Amelia? Yes. Hey, tell our friends, what have you been jumping on outside? A trampoline. Oh, for a million hours? Don't yeah. spill your yogurt, pay attention. Yeah. Yeah, pay attention while mommy's questioning you. Well. Did you? Help Daddy build it? No. No? What did, did you do? I did not build any part of it. Did you just observe while they built it? Um, I, well, I played. You played? With the treats that Naomi got me from the gift store. Oh. The, I'm, from, from the thrift store? Yeah, the thrift store. Well, that's, that's what I would have done. I was cooking, but that sounds good. I would have just played too. Did Naomi already go to bed? She did, I think you wore her out today. Okay, so I'm gonna open our big bulk 25 pound thing of rolled oats. So with this big bag of oatmeal now, that will need to be put in a gallon size bag. May not happen tonight though, I may just set something on top and we'll have to wait till tomorrow. So what I have in here under these 10 cups of oatmeal, there is the 10 pounds of 93% lean ground beef. We got 10 eggs. We have two tablespoons of garlic powder, basically two tablespoons of the main spices I am using for this freezer cooking time. And then I have four to six cups of veggies. I'm gonna now put in four cups of barbecue sauce mix it all together we'll bag it get it in the freezer and then on the days whenever i cook these we will top it with barbecue sauce as well to oh, make we it a true barbecue not not tonight sweetie make this a true barbecue meatloaf so i just got done i got five meatloaves prepped now i'm gonna mark their bags to get these in the freezer I'm giving you a quick where we are now update in the outside freezer. Up here we have stacked tons of French toast and cornbread. 
And then down here, we've got the five barbecue meatloaves. Here are the mashed potatoes that I did last night. That recipe, of course, is over on largefamilytable.com. Here are a bunch of the sandwiches Naomi did. And here are the rest of those. Now you'll see there's other things in my freezer right now, like chicken breast and sausages I got marked down at Sharp Shopper. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to include this sausage deal in my last Sharp Shopper haul, but it doesn't matter now. Anyway, a uh, whole bunch of bacon, and I explained in my last grocery video, I got eight packs of three pounds each bacon, so that's 24 pounds of bacon, but uh, we go through three pounds if we have it like with eggs for breakfast, so that's uh, a little bacon treat for us. And then these different vegetables I'll be using in different freezer meals, and that's our little stash of broccoli, and these blueberries I will be using in blueberry pancakes tomorrow. Now, normally I would buy, you know, just the one huge bag, but when you do that Walmart grocery online ordering, you know, sometimes they supplement. So all four of these equal one huge bag. And yeah, then we just have our regular family stashes of broccoli going on here. So that's how the freezer is looking tonight. And so I've got to take my meatballs in. I've got those stacked behind me to get those in bags. I flash freezed them. Gonna get them in there and then it's on to the baked spaghetti and then I'm done for today. So I ended up with six nine by 13 pans of the spaghetti. I'm going to now, now I could go one or two ways with this. I did have Travis pick me up some ricotta. I could mix the ricotta, top these with ricotta and then some shredded cheese. That's one way. Or another way I do baked spaghetti is I actually top them with sour cream I have some sour cream right now over here by my elbow and uh, and then with the cheese so I think I'm going to do sour cream also prompting this decision is my eggs are back out in the garage refrigerator and I don't want to go back out there to mix those with my ricotta so I'm doing my uh, old faithful and super frugal way of just doing sour cream on top we had actually painted this the other night and that's what got it back on my freezer meal idea for this month and I used sour cream on the top and then topped it with shredded cheese. So I don't know guys if I showed this earlier or not but here are four gallon bags full of those flash freeze meatballs for the freezer and then over here I'm getting ready to take the meatballs back out and then over here here are the six pans of baked spaghetti. Um, if the sour cream on top throws you off again just pretend it's ricotta Honestly, when it's baked, it tastes the same. It's, that's just another little, uh, sometimes ricotta is more expensive and sour cream is a good substitute trick that I have used over the years. So anyway, six pans. We I topped each baked spaghetti casserole with about three to four cups of cheese. These three here have four cups because I had some mozzarella left and these have three. You can't really tell. It'll be good and cheesy. And now I'm going to wrap them up and get them in my one small freezer outside to flash freeze or to freeze over the night and then tomorrow I'll put in my bigger freezer. This is another part that's always time consuming too, actually double layering all the casserole pans. Totally worth it though. It does protect them well in the freezer. And I, so what I do for these big bakes is I do a double layer of foil and I do a double layer of plastic wrap. And so, as you may have saw, you got to be careful because these little disposable pans, of course, are flimsy, but after they freeze overnight, they will be rock hard. I will freeze them layered like this because I can't stack them at this point or they'll just mush down on each other. So, I will stagger them like this in my smaller top freezer. But anyway, so I wrap it, I double wrap it each direction with the, with the foil, see if I can still form some words. Then I'm gonna write baked spaghetti and the date on here. And so now I'm going to do the same wrapping process again with the plastic wrap.
So guys, I wanted to recap with you. It is now, let's see, it's 1148. And my goal was to be totally done by 10. We had um, our kitchen sink back up. We've got, we just got stuff in the pea trap, Travis says. And I think what happened was one of those uh, metal scrub brushes got sucked down the garbage disposal. Anyway, so that took up a little extra time. And wrapping those last, um, the six, baked spaghettis took time. So I was just going to recap with you today. And actually, let me turn this light on. Hold on here. There we go. A little bit more time. Okay, so what we did get done. Got the seven pans of cornbread done. It actually broke up to be like 14 gallon bags full. Um, just how I liked to bag it. We got seven loaves of cinnamon French toast done. Thank you, Zion. Last night, I'll add this in because it's all part of my freezer cooking. I processed 20 pounds of those uh, homemade mashed potatoes for the freezer and then today we did 17 dozen of the meatballs and I just I like making lists and then drawing lines through them okay <laughs> and then I also before we get to the baked spaghetti we did the big batch of the spaghetti sauce and then I ended up with six pans I wanted four got six pans of the baked spaghetti and then we ended up with five loaves of the barbecue meatloaf. Uh, this little extra like one and two where I was doing these extra numbers, this is where I was prioritizing earlier. And that's what we got done for today. Hold on here, I'm trying to not cover up my speaker. Um, also, and we bulk cooked 20 pounds of ground beef in the electric pressure cooker. So I also wanted to get done today, I wanted to get done the cookie dough for the freezer, the biscuits for the freezer, and the pizza dough for the freezer. But between my breaks with Benjamin, it just, you know, things took longer than expected. So I'm going to start tomorrow with the baking end of things and get the cookie dough, biscuits, and pizza dough done. And I'm going to have probably Zion man the pancake station tomorrow. Jaden is working and Naomi has been running with Travis and the younger kids. Anyway, Zion's been my main freezer freezer meal helper in the kitchen this time. Jaden did sweep everything for me this evening, which was good. This is how I'd like to start the day. The biggest things assembly-wise tomorrow, after all this uh, baking freezer prep, is the shepherd's pie. I've got the potatoes done for that, and I have the ground beef done for it. I'm just going to have to assemble it. I need to do baked mac and cheese, and so the noodles and nothing for that is done. So I'll do that. And then we have the slow cooker sloppy joes, slow cooker honey and garlic chicken, slow cooker rosemary chicken, slow cooker white chicken chili, and then slow cooker garlic and lime chicken. And then I added on here pork fried rice. I think that is just one of my ambitious JMRL thoughts, but I may do pork fried rice for the freezer here in the coming weeks. So with all of this done though, I will be thrilled if I truly get this all done in two days of freezer cooking. So I'm going to sign off for tonight. Um, my face is hanging down to the floor, so I'm not going to look at you right now. Thank you for watching day one of my large family freezer cooking days. Remember, text the word freezer to 44222 if you haven't already to get my free mega meal planning pack, which is I'm using one of the pages of it here. Yeah, so I have freezer cooking goodies coming out in the coming weeks besides these videos. It's very exciting stuff and I can't wait to show it to you guys. So whenever you get my free mega freezer cooking day planning pack, you'll be the first to know when all of my new freezer cooking goodies are out and about. So that is it for today. Be looking for part two. I'm doing this in two separate vlogs. So we had day one today. We're going to do day two tomorrow. And together we're going to get all these lovely freezer meals done.